So Infinix has just launched its fresh new Note 12 smartphone and this bad boy right here is the VIP edition. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly feeling very VIP right now. Like me and my posse are right at the very back of Inferno's nightclub drinking our complimentary pitcher of woo-woo behind the little velvet rope bit that separates us from the rest of the plebs. And that's because the Infinix Note 12 VIP boasts some truly pants popping specs, including an AMOLED screen and stereo speakers. You've got some gaming features, 120 watt fast charging, a 108 megapixel primary camera, all kinds of lovely stuff. And all for a price that shouldn't have you weeping at the very sight of your credit card bill. So let's whip the Infinix Note 12 VIP on out the box, take you on a full tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So firstly, what do you actually get in this massive shiny silver box? Besides, of course, the Note 12 VIP. Well, you've got one of the widest smartphone adapters I've ever seen to support that 120 watt fast charge. And good luck shoving this in one of those multi-plug strips alongside other plugs. You've got yourself a Type-C USB cable, whoop whoop. You've got a pair of cheap and cheerful headphones bundled in there as well, although they do look like proper ear scrapers. So uh, probably best just shoved in the bag as a backup pair. You've also got a porky pin to get your SIM in there in its own separate pouch, no less. Very VIP. And while the Note 12 doesn't come with its very own bouncer or bodyguard or anything, it does come with a condom case for a bit of added protection. So just slap that on there. It's transparent so it doesn't hide the design or anything. It doesn't add too much in the way of girth or anything either. You've also got a whole bunch of stickers. You can show off exactly how important you are. And it comes bundled with a $1 bill so you can make it rain down the club. Now, it's not actually money at all. In fact, it's better than money. It's an invitation to join Infinix's X Club. Apparently, X Club has cool stuff around you, allows you to make friends, become famous, and earn the monies. Sign me up, bruv. And last of all, you also get a screen protector bundled in the box there. Although, you do also get a screen protector pre-installed, which is great stuff. And that's everything you'll find inside the Notes 12 VIP's box. Now, the Infinix Note 12 VIP is apparently constructed from aerospace grade materials. I'm not gonna lie though, looks and feels an awful lot like plastic. Infinix describes the phone as ultra thin and yet still pleasingly rigid, a description that could also be leveled at myself. As you can see there, you've got a flat edge design, which seems to be all the rage these days. I'm blaming those bloody iPhones. Gotta say, personally, I do prefer rounded edges as it just makes the smartphone more comfortable to clutch. Not that the Infinix Note 12 VIP is uncomfortable to hold. And thankfully isn't too chunky, even though the display section does kind of jut up above the edging. And thankfully the bezels surrounding that display aren't particularly chunky. And then around back you've got a matte finish. Again, looks and feels quite plasticky, but also sparkles slightly when it catches the light. Quite a smart and simple finish, gotta say, do quite like the aesthetics here. You've got a proper wide camera bump up top, but it doesn't jut too much from the surface of the smartphone, which is good to see. And another reminder that you are, yes indeed, VIP. And this is the key and grey model, but you can also grab the Infinix Note 12 VIP in Force Black. And at 198 grams, got a decent heft to it, but not too cumbersome. So overall, yes, it does look and feel like a budget smartphone, but the Note 12 is rather smart and certainly appears a little bit different. Now, good news on the software side, because the Note 12 is actually running Android 12, and slathered on top of that is Infinix's very own XOS version 10.6. As far as launches go, XOS is definitely on the heavier side. It adds a lot of bonus features on top of Android and also changes up the general look and vibe. So for one, swipe uh, this way and instead of a Google Discover feed, you've got the smart scenes and uh, fast access to your recent apps and all kinds of shenanigans, including a random little mantra which changes every time you swipe across. Feel the fear and do it anyway, unless it's jumping off a cliff, in which case definitely don't do that anyway. Uh, no pain, no gain. Well, that's, uh, that's a deep one. You can also clear up your memory as well if you find that the Infinix Note 12 is running a bit sluggish for whatever reason and you can track your exercise. If you happen to do exercise, uh, for me, I'm, I'm all good on that, thanks. And this version of XOS also introduces whopping great big folders, kind of iOS style, which are optional. You can deactivate them if you like. This gives you fast access to a variety of apps. Otherwise, you can also tap down in the bottom right and open up the full folder. And you set up as many of those folders as you want. You've also got the usual various widgets and everything. Lots of bonus XOS stuff. Got media players, resource management, a theme app, all kinds of stuff. So actually you get quite a lot pre-installed on here. A lot of which definitely falls into the category of crapware, but thankfully most of it can be uninstalled. 
But thankfully the Infinix Note 12 VIP does come with an apps tray by default and if you dive on into the home settings you can play around with all kinds of stuff. Got lots of customization so plenty of gesture settings for instance you can slide down anywhere to bring down the notifications bar. So like so, fast, easy access. And if you swipe down from the right hand side, you do have the control panel, which by default is missing some key stuff like do not disturb and the one handed mode, but you can just add those in yourself. And that one handed mode in particular, very, very helpful indeed, considering the size of this bloody thing. And then yes, loads of extra customization options buried away inside are the settings and plenty of extra bits, including a proper full on kids mode. Always great to see you've got the Folax voice assistant, which can read out messages and the likes for you. Lots of other bonus bits, some of which I'll try and cover in the rest of this video. And yeah, the added layer of complexity provided by XOS does mean the occasional little bug creeps in, like sometimes a notification could be like impossible to remove. But overall, the past uh, sort of 48 hours or so, I haven't had too much trouble at all from this smartphone, which is good. And hopefully because it's VIP, Infinix will support it for more than just the requisite sort of one or two OS updates, uh, but I wouldn't expect too much to be honest. And the Infinix Note 12 VIP also boasts a dual x-axis linear motor tactile system, in other words a proper bit of rumble action. It's nothing particularly impressive, but it's not bad at all for a budget smartphone. And absolutely no complaints with the fingerprint sensor built into that super skinny edge mounted power button as well so far seems very responsive very nippy no issues at all as for the storage well almost 20 gigs is used up by the system but the good news is infinix has generously chucked you 256 gigs in total and in the dinky sim tree you've not only got space for two sims side by side on that edge but you've also got room for a micro sd memory card to expand that storage now for a budget smartphone, the Infinix Note 12 VIP does sport a rather spiffing 6.7 inch AMOLED display. It's a full HD plus resolution panel, so even though it's a spacious display, those visuals come through nice and crisp. Got nice wide viewing angles as usual with an OLED panel, reasonably punchy colours as well. You don't have much customization over the actual output in the display settings, although you do have the usual features such as an always on display mode. The selfie orifice isn't particularly compact and it is centrally positioned so it is a bit more intrusive than those pushed away in the corner but nothing too horrendous. But my main problem with that display is the brightness, certainly the adaptive brightness feature I would just knock that right off because certainly for my first couple of days it just sets the display brightness far too low on most occasions. Hopefully that's something that will improve over time as the phone recognises you are constantly manually pumping up that brightness. But at least on those maxed out levels, the outdoor visibility isn't too bad at all, can generally see what's going on. And that's despite the fact that the screen is quite dim on most of the brightness settings until you sort of bump it up to the very, very top end. And if you jump into the display settings, you do have a screen refresh rate option as well. As you can see there, it's set to dynamic by default. So you can either rely on that to switch you between 60 and 120 hertz refresh or you can just bump it up to that maximum level full time or indeed keep it on 60 hertz if you want to preserve battery life. And the Note 12 VIP also spots a stereo speaker setup with full DTS audio process and let's bump up the volume to max see what we got. A fully autonomous robot kitty ready to fill your meaningless existence with pretend love. At least until Skynet remotely gives it the heads up to rip out your windpipe while you're sleeping. So maximum volume, reasonably punchy, uh, just in terms of the actual volume levels. So if you are trying to watch a video in a noisy environment, hopefully it should be all right. Although definitely very tinny output as well, as you'd expect from a budget blower. As for the audio processing, well, you are on the smart mode by default, but you can change that up if you like, and then mess around with various other audio settings. So let's move on to performance. And the Infinix Note 12 VIP is powered by the MediaTek Helio G96 chipset backed here by eight gigs of RAM, pretty generous for a budget smartphone. Unfortunately, because it's a G96, that means no 5G modem, so you are stuck at LTE. No massive shocks or surprises when it comes to the benchmark and a reasonably small single core score. Uh, but you know what, the everyday performance here on the Note 12 has been absolutely fine so far, reasonably slick and smooth. You know, you're not hanging around for absolutely ages waiting for your apps to load up. They're reasonably nippy. And if you are a gamer, well, the good news is that the Note 12 does boast its own game mode courtesy of XOS. Got all the usual tools and shenanigans in here, including, for instance, the do not disturb that can automatically pop on when you are gaming. Anti-addiction can tell you to put down the Call of Duty mobile and go read a book or stroke a cat or something. Can uh, turn off the automatic brightness feature for you, which by now you should have done so anyway, because it's bloody woeful. 
but you will have to actually manually tell XOS which of your apps are games so it uh, knows that because it can't figure that out automatically. And I found that certainly for a budget smartphone, the gaming experience was pretty decent here. And the likes of Call of Duty Mobile, I found I was reasonably competitive. The screen responsiveness, you've got 360 hertz touch sampling. It's not quite as sensitive as I would have liked, unfortunately, but I didn't struggle too much apart from against the usual cheating, bloody sniping school kids. I even had a bit of a smash on Genshin Impact here on the Note 12 VIP and I felt that the experience was all right, to be perfectly honest. It was set to the lowest detail settings and I did see the odd little judder and stumble here and there, but it was just about playable. That's helped along by the likes of the Dolling 2.0 Ultimate Game Booster, which can apparently help to improve the frame rate stability. And even when playing really demanding games like Genshin Impact for the duration, I found that the Note 12 VIP didn't heat up. It does actually have a built-in vapor chamber, as well as a nine layer graphene design to help shift all that pesky heat away. So overall, yeah, if you are looking to get a bit of gaming on the go, but you are on a strict budget, the Note 12 VIP, not a bad option at all. And packed inside of this Infinite Explorer, you'll also find a 4,500 milliamp hour capacity battery. I've got to say, really impressed with the battery life here on the Note 12 VIP. It'll easily last you the day on a single charge. Even if you're really hammering this thing, you'd literally have to be gaming on it non-stop to wipe it out. Just as an example, I've been using it for a couple of hours so far this morning, demonstrating it to you fine folk. A little bit of camera play, bit of gaming, bit of streaming on Netflix and the like, and it's only down to 94%. And of course, you've got that 120 watt fast charge and rival than the likes of Xiaomi as well. If you dive on into the power marathon mode, you'll see that there's something in here called Furious Mode. Absolutely love that name. What this basically does is it can fully charge your smartphone from 0% to 100% in just 17 minutes. Of course, this will cause your phone to heat up and everything as well. So you're probably best off knocking that off, in which case the Infinix still only takes 26 minutes to charge. You've got temperature protection built in with 18 separate thermal sensors. You've got charge overload protection, etc., as well. On the battery health front, Infinix reckons that even after 800 charges, you should still have up to 85% battery capacity. Of course, the up to part of that means that all they're really guaranteeing is that the battery capacity will drop by at least 15%, which ain't really saying much. But because of that fast charging support, it is good to see that they've included the temperature regulation and everything as well, just to help safeguard your smartphone. Now let's finish up this Infinix Note 12 VIP smartphone unboxing with a squint at that camera tech, which is headed up by a mighty 108 megapixel primary shooter. By default, this uses nine in one pixel binnings. You do get 12 megapixel photos when you hit that shutter button, but you can bump it up to the maximum 108 meg resolution if you want to. I'd keep that off though, unless the lighting conditions are really good. The pixel bidding does help to brighten up your shots otherwise. So you'll certainly find that ambient indoor shots and everything come out nice and crisp and clear all the same. And certainly outdoor shots, I was very impressed by some of the detail levels that you see in there, reasonably accurate color reproduction. And as you can see there, you do actually have built-in eye tracking as well, which works on human subjects as well as animals or pets like cats and dogs. And this certainly seems to work well on the screen at least, but you will have to keep a distance from your subject still. Otherwise you will find that quite often they do come out blurry and the smartphone is focusing on the background instead. Lots of other bonus modes, including the obligatory beauty bollocks as well, which I always try and avoid. You've got the portrait mode, of course, to add a bokeh style effect, which is fully customizable. Let's have another go at that one. Customizable. You've also got a super night mode, which definitely helps to brighten up a shot when things are very, very dim. And you can also shoot a good bit of video action up to 2K resolution footage. And here's just a, a few short clips of home movies I shot around the homesteads, mostly of my cats, of course, as usual. And yeah, if you are shooting indoors, things do tend to get a bit murkier, so you'll want to shoot in good conditions. The other lens slapped on the back here is your bog standard basic 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, quite good if you want a more pulled back view of the action. And then last up around front, you do have a 16 megapixel selfie snapper as well, again with full portrait smarts, good bit of the eye trackings. And this again seems fine for your simple shareable shots, though the likes of the portrait mode aren't customizable as they are with the rear camera. And if you are snapping away at night as well, for whatever reason, you do actually have a built-in flash up above the display as well, which frankly is rather blinding, uh, but you know, it can, it can light up your mug when needed. And the good news is that front-facing selfie cam is capable of capturing 2K resolution footage Again, some pretty crisp results again for a budget blower. And the audio pickup's pretty strong as well, so there'll be no issues with Skype calls or anything like that. 
And that in a nutshell is the fresh new Infinix Notes 12 VIP. And I've got to say for a budget smartphone, I do rather like it. You've got a gorgeous AMOLED panel on there, the feature packed XOS, as long as you don't mind the fact that it is a very heavy launcher. Indeed, respectable game and performance, fantastic battery life. The camera is a little bit wonky here and there, but as long as you can put up with that, then generally good stuff. But now it'd be great to hear from you fine folk at home. Are you tempted by the Infinix Note 12 VIP? I'm actually shooting this video ahead of the official phone launch, but when I know the uh, pricing and availability information, I'll try and remember to stick that down in the video description. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.